Good morning. Good morning, Ali. Now, we hope that this is going to be a regular segment so people take the opportunity to talk to you. But I guess we should say at the outset, it's pretty hard to do a deep dive into a very specific issue while you're live on Talkback Radio. (laughs) Absolutely. So really, if if I can just have the opportunity to give people an idea of what they can complain about... um, because there are so many, you know. The, the, I mean, basically, I, I, I deal with all state and local government services, pretty much everything in Victoria except the police, which I don't deal with, um, and decisions of, of the courts. And I don't deal with Commonwealth agencies, and I don't deal with private sector. You know, people complain to us about their florist or their plumber and their phone bills and so on, and can't deal with those. Right. So there's some of the, the boundaries. one three hundred triple two seven seven four 774 is the number. Or you can text 0437 774 774. Before we call, just a couple of quick questions that are sort of following up on some of the issues that have been in news headlines lately. Remembrance Park, Central Victoria. Now, we remember this story. Where there were adornments removed from grave sites and there was an apology made. But what went wrong there? Well, very, very, very distressing for the families involved. We had complaints from a number of people who, whose um, ornaments on graves had been removed without communication, consultation. And what seems to have happened is that, you know, health and safety issues, um, I think somebody might have tripped over something at one point, so there was a review. The, 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 um, that what led to it? In I, the I believe place. so. So, you know, so there's, there's a legitimate need to make sure that that cemeteries are safe places and, you know, completely get that. I think we would all accept that. But what seems to have gone wrong is, is in the communication. People didn't know and, 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 um, and really um, personal ornaments were removed without people having the opportunity to claim it. So you know, things went to the tip, you know. So somebody, you know, for example, said, well, I had a, 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 a concrete angel on my child's grave. You, know, you can imagine how they would feel to find that had been removed. So what, what's happened to ensure, I mean, are, are people able to come back? What are the rules now? Look, this is still an ongoing series of complaints. So I'm, I'm, um, I, I, the, 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 the trust has apologised. Um, they're, they're engaging with people. It, it, it's, um, I mean, it will come down to that balance of, 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 of safety and adornment, you know, so safe adornment. I, I, but maybe not a blanket. I, I I think that it, it, it will probably come down to individual circumstances. And with so often with these things, it just comes down to communicate well with people, tell people what you're doing, you know, deal with the, the consequences of, uh, of something. And, and all too often we see this in bureaucracies. They just forget. How, as, a, as the ombudsman, how powerful are you when it comes to making a decision and having it enforced? Well, that's a good question that I get quite often. And in fact, I, my recommendations are not enforceable. No ombudsman's recommendations, you know, parliamentary ombudsman's recommendations are, but they're very persuasive. So what tends to happen, and I can happily report that over 90% of my recommendations are accepted, uh, that um, when we deal with the thousands of complaints a year about you know, whether it's uh, ambulance fees or some local council issue or a fine or whatever, that uh, w- when we suggest to an agency that they might like to do something in relation to resolve a complaint, more often than not, they agree. And almost invariably, I have to say, they agree. And do you ever pursue anything in the courts or you once you've no, done your persuasion, that's uh, it? It's not my, my role to pursue in the courts. But what, um, what I do do, and I have done, if, um, if, if we find that uh, the persuasive powers are perhaps not as effective in the early days as they might be, I'll, I'll formally investigate. Now, I think something that people are not as aware of as they might is that I have the power of a royal commission. So you can so, compel people to absolutely. give evidence to you. Absolutely. So when, I'm, when I launch a formal investigation, and I don't do many of these a year, but I can do, and agencies know I can do that. And that's one of the reasons, in fact, that... that Makes um, you very persuasive, well, doesn't I, it? I can be very persuasive. <laughs> so people don't really like being investigated by the ombudsman. So if, um, if, if agreeing to an ombudsman's suggestion is a way of not being investigated, well, that's, um, that compensation just gets paid. Uh, let's take some calls. one three hundred triple two seven seven four is the number. Gwen in Belgrave. Hi, Gwen. Hello. Yes, what did you want to say? Um, my question for Deborah is... Since your last review, do you consider Vic Roads has improved its performance in how they communicate with their customers? 
That's a question. Oh, that's a good question, Gwen. I, I um I can only judge these things on the complaints we get. So I don't, you know, it's not it's not something that that, that um, I, I can sort of give you chapter and verse on. If um and we do get we still get complaints about are they votes. higher or lower? What's they're, the they're, they're pretty consistent. Right. So one of the things we do is monitor levels of complaint. There certainly have been as far as I'm aware, more complaints about Vic Road's communication than there were, it's, um, or, or other things. So I think we have to deal with it on an individual basis. I mean, if there's a particular issue that, that, um, that somebody has, then you've got to bring it to us. We'll have a look at it. And if other people have the same issue, then we'll, we'll raise it. Gwen, do you have an issue call. or are you just curious? Uh, yes, the issue is I'm particularly interested in um, how they... Um, to do the medical review procedure and what qualifications do these people have in, you know... Um, this must be an insurance-related question. No, it's about medical review, especially for older people. Oh, I see. Ah, yes, OK. It is absolutely okay. impossible to get an answer and um, I've had a quite a difficult time um, my GP I've been seeing for 18 years and um, if she doesn't know about my medical, I have never had any demerit points, nothing. And you can't one, get an answer on your licence, is that right, One accident in uh, 50 years with no demerit points or anything and it's kind of like... I am so I'm sure that I am not the only person that this is happening to. Gwen, look, let's we will leave that issue with the um, look, ombudsman. Can, can I suggest, mm. Gwen, that that because that, that you know that's the kind of thing we can help you with. Mm. And if you and are there struggling would be lots to of get people. through, yeah, yeah. So give us a call. It's it's one eight hundred eight zero six three one four. If you want to call the office and speak to to one of my um, complaints team, uh, and they you know they'll take you through uh, what you can do about it. Yeah. Good. There you are, Gwen. Hopefully that will help you. Uh, Andy Andy and Pran. Good morning, Andy. Well, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, another one on Vic Rose. Uh, last year I paid my registration uh, renewal uh, and a couple months later received a letter from Vic Rose stating that it had been underpaid and I had 28 days to make up the difference, which was only $40. Uh, I think uh, my issue with it was that I paid the amount that they initially requested and then got, you know, uh, basically a shakedown demanding more money. And if I didn't, uh, uh, suspension of uh, registration. I complained to Vic Roads, haven't had a response. Uh, I'm just wondering where should I go from here? Is this something that the ombudsman? Absolutely, can yeah. Give us a call if you've complained to Big Roads and you've got nowhere. That we, 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 I think you know, we, we'd certainly could look into that. You know, again, you know, one eight hundred eight zero six three one four. But isn't that a bit weird that you? It, is. Pay it does what seem. You it does seem very strange. Pay and then they decide they're going to change the amount. That does seem very strange. Andy, you don't have you actually had it verified? It was absolutely no question. The forty dollars was legit. Uh, according to them, yes, it was. It was. Uh, it looks like it may have been an error on their part. Right. Uh, and I've I no issue paying. If I owe it, I, I'm happy to pay it. Uh, I just think the way the whole thing was handled was mm. very unfair. You must mm. pay it, or you don't won't be able to drive your car. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm sorry to hear that, mm. Andy. That 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 does. And communication is one of the things we find all the time. You know, as we. We're talking about with the cemetery trust. It's, it's sometimes a, a decision they make is fair, but it's communicated in such a way as to as to really get and to put a strict up. deadline mm. on something yeah. that was their fault in the first instance, and isn't a huge amount of money. Uh, so there you go, Andy. Uh, give the ombudsman's office a call and give them the details. James in South East Melbourne. Hi, James. Hey, uh, morning, uh, Miss Morin. Good morning, Miss Glass. Um, Thank you for taking my call. Uh, this is in relation to what happened last year was that uh, my wife had um, the same jab of COVID vaccination and that led to her having severe pain in her arm and she ended up with a frozen shoulder. So I would pick her up and drop her to work and help her with the working home equipment, you know, back and forth. And I would find a place to park, safe place, and then a sort of, you know, in a parking place. But that they had to take some equipment for her and to give it out and uh, in the front of the office and I parked in a in a no parking zone because right in front of it I thought it'll take only thirty seconds. I'll just pick out this and it's a small street, there's not much traffic going anyway. And I got pinged by the local council for um, uh, no parking and um, hundred and something or dollars and back and forth I tried to 
get them to waive it. They wouldn't. They added more to it, and they sent it out to Fines Victoria. And then I kept pursuing through over the Fines Victoria and trying to get them to waive the fee or take that back. They wouldn't listen. Uh, and then I wrote to the ombudsman, and I got a response from the ombudsman just last week saying they can't do much about it. The council has followed the rules, and um, and uh, that that's it. And to pursue it with Fines Victoria. In all these cases, I've actually even given the medical certificate from the GP saying that this lady had this problem and she, you know, with, uh, to, so she could work more more time at home, with, especially with carrying equipment, computers, etc., to set up. And here I'm left now with uh, this issue. I'm thinking, like, surely the council could have said, you know what, we understand. Yeah, James, yeah. let's just see. How, how much, Deborah? how much leeway or, you know? Yeah, the, the, these are really tricky ones, James, and uh, it's and, and I, I, I do feel for you. The... Um, the the, the, the issues here around discretion. I mean, if you parking in a no parking zone is, is, is something that's generally a no no in 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 in, 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 in councils and, and and everywhere, and it's it's understandable why people get upset about it both ways. Actually, um, what um, there are discretions there, and there are discretions in my office. There are discretions within within councils. Usually, if you can present a really compelling case, does that sound I mean, like a compelling I mean, case? It, it, it sounds pretty compelling, but again, you know, I, I don't want to make decisions on the fly. You know, you've, you've got to look at the evidence. You'd expect the council to look at the evidence, uh, to see you know, how, you know what, what alternatives were there. Again, you know, you can't. Not something that I'd want to make a decision about. Um, and whether the car was left unattended for you know, have you know, that, you know, how long? It comes down to you know how reasonable was the decision. Uh, okay, and here's a question for hard you. To say. Do you. Reasonableness. I'm not sure that. There's a lot of us who would necessarily put reasonableness and government depart in the same sentence. Is that being too harsh? Oh, I mean, often well, it does no, seem there's, there's, a, there's, a, <laughs> there's a rule and the rule will stand. This whole idea of being able to assess the circumstances, how realistic is that? The, the, the questions that we ask all the time is, is it fair? Is it reasonable? And that's why there is an ombudsman, because they, bureaucrats uh, will make unfair decisions from time to time. Uh, and you need to have some place to go to have those assessed. That doesn't mean we're always going to agree with you or we're going to agree with, with the agency, but we will look independently at the circumstances and go, mm, mm. actually, what they did was, was fair or actually you no, don't have or, a, or no, it wasn't. No, you, and as you say, you're independent. It, it's neither here nor there to you one way or the other, exactly. which puts you in a good position. Uh, Kerry in Port Melbourne. Hi, Kerry. Hi, good morning, Ali and Deborah. So last July, the Ombudsman's Office released a report entitled <coughs> Investigation into Complaint Handling in the Victorian Social Housing Sector. And it was um, a damning critique from Ms. Glass about the um, tenancy and maintenance services provided by government to public housing tenants and also um, what community community housing tenants receive from their landlords. Yep. So my question is, how can we progress these issues? Because the minister at the time, Danny Pearson, did not bother to respond publicly. Um, fortunately, we do have a new minister, Colin Brooks, who seems to actually respect and appreciate public, the public housing system. But nevertheless, Ali and Deborah, nothing's changed at the grassroots. And I'm wondering whether the ombudsman um, can do something to alert the minister yeah, that let's this put, is a very... Yeah, let's yes. put that to Deborah. Kerry, I, I'm, I'm so pleased you've read my report into public housing um, complaints. Uh, it, it, it was, I think, a, an important report and, and I, I, I'm glad you found it useful. And I, and I have to say I share your frustration that nothing has happened or not enough has happened. Uh, what, I, what I can say is that every time I, I table a report in Parliament, I follow up. So it's not going to gather dust. Uh, I am monitoring the recommendations. What effectively what the government said, and and, and I felt equally frustrated that you know that really I couldn't get a straight answer to to what was some pretty straightforward and I think non contentious recommendations that would make a really big difference to the to how public housing and social housing tenants uh, were able to you know to to engage with um, the people providing them services. Uh, so, W was that they, you know they were waiting on other things? There was a review being conducted, and 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 they were they were to look at all these issues together. So, uh, frustrating. Do you have a timeline on frustrating. Any of that? Well, 
I can, as I said, I can't enforce my recommendations, but I always monitor, and I'm monitoring those. We, we will be engaging to say what's going on. And we're also looking, I mean, even separately from that, Kerry, you know, one of the things that I, I, I would say to you is that uh, I'm also very aware that there's more that my office can do around housing complaints. And I would encourage you and anybody else in, in, in public housing or social housing who's got a problem with maintenance and isn't getting anywhere to keep contacting us because that's, that's part of what provides the weight of evidence to say, hey, listen, guys, you've got to do something more here. Because it's and becoming more it's urgent. More, it it yep. is. It's so a log I, of complaints, if nothing else. Yes. Mm. So, I, I, um, so I can tell you, first of all, I am monitoring. I will be following up. But in individual cases, whether it's you or anybody else uh, in those circumstances, and you've got a problem with maintenance, you've got a problem with uh, you know, whatever else we get, uh, antisocial tenants and, and the like, very common, please contact us, tell us about it, and we, will, we are keeping the pressure on. We'll try and squeeze one more call in. Kirsten in Surrey Hills. Hi, Kirsten. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. I just wanted to ask a question. Why is it that so many of the recommendations that are approved by the Ombudsman on LXRP and big build projects are then challenged by government lawyers fighting the decision of the independent umpire and then seeking review in BCAS? So the community is then designed, denied access to this detailed information directly affecting them and the impact is often unlearned after a project's completed. I don't think that was me. I, I haven't made decisions on level crossing removals. That's not... I mean, we, we can deal with complaints about the level crossing removal authority, and we do, but uh, I don't deal with those matters. In, if VCAT is dealing with something, then it's not the ombudsman. So it's you, usually can't, one, you it's can't... usually one or the other. Okay, so I'm not a review mechanism for, <laughs> for VCAT or the courts, for instance. I'm they a kind of alternative. And th this is, I guess, one of the... Uh, well, one of the complexities around the ombudsman role is just trying to understand oh, who's it's, responsible it's for what. You know, like it's, for telecommunications, for example, has its own ombudsman. So there's a whole lot of different... You know, they're industry mm -hmm. ombudsman. And, and that, you know, that's why these conversations are, I think, really important because mm -hmm. it is a tricky area. It is complicated. But, hey, you know, the, the, the point of an ombudsman, and, I, and I, you know, sadly I can't help everyone or deal with every, every issue that, um, that, that, that comes to us, but there's a lot I can do and mm -hmm. I, I want... If my job, and it is, is to improve public administration, I can only do that if people tell us where they're getting it wrong. And, and I also, I take your point about maybe you're not seeing an immediate outcome, but it's the sheer weight of evidence logging these issues that gives you more firepower Absolutely. when you go to these various authorities. Deborah Glass, thank you very much for coming in. My pleasure. Deborah Glass there, Victorian Ombudsman. And if you do want to contact the Ombudsman's office, one eight hundred eight zero six three one four.